a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. Hey, welcome back to Courageous Media. And that is the iconic image that will live forever. The photo of Trump, fist in the air, bloodied face, being whisked away to a hospital after being shot at the Butler, Pennsylvania rally. Thanks so much for joining me again. I told you we'd have a follow-up as more details became available. Uh, I wanted to wait till we had a little bit more information. It's still, everything is still sketchy, still so much fog of war out there. But what we do have paints a very dark picture as to what happened in Butler, Pennsylvania. We do know that President Trump is okay. President Trump has been released from the hospital. President Trump was posting on True Social. Uh, we have all that for you, uh, and we'll delve into that here in just a minute. Uh, so we're going to dive. Uh, we're going to look at, at, at Trump's response uh, immediately, uh, the fact that he thanks Secret Service. And then we've got some very disturbing eyewitness accounts. We're going to take you through two eyewitness accounts as to what was happening uh, at the Butler PA rally. You need to stay tuned for all that. Please watch through the end. First, let's check in, check in on Donald Trump. His, he has since put out a statement in which he says that he felt a bullet ripping through his ear. He said he heard a whizzing sound, and as he went to the ground, he then noticed the bleeding, and that's when he realized, he said, that something was wrong. Statement from Donald Trump, I want to thank the United States Secret Service and all of law enforcement for their rapid response to the shooting that took place in Butler, Pennsylvania. Most importantly, I want to extend my condolences to the family of the person at the rally who was killed and also to the family of another person that was badly injured. It is incredible that such an act can take place in our country. Nothing is known at this time about the shooter, who is now dead. I was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my right ear. I knew immediately that something was wrong and that I heard a whizzing sound, shots and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin. Much bleeding took place, so I realized then what was happening. God bless America. From that point on, Donald Trump was then taken off the stage, carried by the Secret Service, or at least surrounded by the Secret Service, put into his vehicle that was awaiting and was driven to a local hospital. There, presumably, he, reserved, uh, 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 he was given, rather, treatment at that hospital. He stayed for about two hours or so, a little north of two hours, and since then, his motorcade has left. We also know this evening, as the focus, of course, is on the 45th president, that the violence of this episode extends well beyond him. The so, what we do know now is Trump is okay. Trump is good. Uh, he's, been, he's been released from the hospital. Uh, his motorcade has whisked him away presumably either to his jet to fly down to Mar-a-Lago or in whatever hotel he might've been staying at in the uh, Pennsylvania area. But prayer, thoughts and prayers go out to Donald Trump. Uh, thank God that he is alive. Thank God that he was not shot. Thank God that we are not in the middle of a civil war right now. Because if that bullet had been two inches to the right, I'm afraid that's exactly where we would be. But thank God that did not happen. Also, Condolences, thoughts, and prayers go out to the one person who was killed and the other who was seriously injured as a result of this lunatic sniper. Uh, now, as we delve into the lunatic sniper and to what actually happened at this rally, as you can see a picture of basically where the shooter was, the crowd, the stage. It's, it's interesting that we've got two eyewitness accounts and this, these are the dark, disturbing details that I want to get into. We started with Trump was shot, Trump is okay, we avoided civil war, thank God. Now, let's start to figure out what the heck happened. 
Trump has Secret Service protection. What were they doing? What were the security lapses that happened? What is going on? Because this should not happen in the United States of America. It certainly should not happen to a former president, an incumbent, running for president again. He's got Secret Service protection. They know what they're they 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 know what they are doing. What this spacks of is either complete incompetence or some level of an inside job, a stand down order. I'm not sure, but you can see here where Donald Trump would have been on the stage. Here's the roof where the shooter was. They're saying it's hardly uh, 150 yards. It's a football field and a half. 300 to 450 feet. That is not far for a rifle shot. That's a rifle shot I can make at the range. Now, thank God he missed. That's all we know. That's all we have to know right now from that aspect, whether he was trained or not trained. Uh, all Everything is pointing to the fact that he was an Antifa uh, thug and was not trained uh, or had very minimal training. Otherwise, we might be looking at a different incident. However, I want to take you to two eyewitness accounts that really smack of, that really ask a lot of questions that we do not yet have answers to. So let's take you to the first eyewitness account. And listen to the rally, right? We couldn't see him, but we could hear him. So we walked up and probably five to seven minutes of Trump speaking. I'm estimating here. I have no idea, you know. So this gentleman was outside the secure perimeter. As he said, they, 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 didn't, they couldn't see Donald Trump. They were just there. Uh, they were outside and they were just listening. They were just listening from, from the speakers or whatnot. So it sounds like he's outside the secure area. Uh, so it may not be an issue of somebody got a weapon past the magnetometers. But let's keep going. But um, we noticed the guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle. Absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof. We can see him from right here. We see him. He, you know, he's, he's crawling. And... Next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two or three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots ring out. So you're, you're certain that the shots came from that guy on the roof? hundred percent. 100%. And he, he was up there for a couple of minutes. He was up you there. You saw him up there for a couple of minutes. Absolutely. At least three and to four were, minutes. And you were telling yep. police in the Secret Service. We were telling the police. We were pointing at him for the Secret Service who were looking at us from the top of the barn. They were looking at us the whole time when we were standing by that tree. Could they see Binoculars. Him? Could they see him? Probably not because the roof, the way the, the slope went, he was behind where they could see. But, but why is there not Secret Service on all of these roofs here? I mean, this is not a big place. Did you see, I mean, obviously everyone, when the shooting started, everyone was very panicked. Did, oh, you, uh, did you see what happened to him at all? Oh, yeah, they blew his head off. You, okay, sorry. Secret Service just, blew his head off. Okay, we just be careful because we don't quite know who's watching, but you, you're pretty sure they, they, they shot the guy. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, okay. Yep. You, you saw that happen? Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. And did you see them go up to him afterwards or? They, yeah, they crawled up on the roof. They had their guns pointed at him, make sure he was dead. He was dead. And that was it. It was over. Wow. Wow. Going back to the map here. That is just amazing. Amazing eyewitness account of people who saw the shooter before it happened crawling up on the roof. It sounds like it's outside the secure area, but well within the visual range of Secret Service, well within the visual range and, 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 and at least a somewhat secure perimeter because he's talking to law enforcement. He says they see the guy crawling up on the roof with a rifle. He points out to law enforcement. He says, there's a guy on the roof crawling with a rifle. Evidently, law enforcement reaches out to Secret Service because he can see Secret Service on the barn, which is this here, where 
behind where Donald Trump was, because you'll you'll see images of the Secret Service sniper team up above Trump on that barn. They said they're looking at him. Why doesn't the Secret Service or law enforcement do anything? Two to three minutes? That's an eternity. They could have taken out, if they can take out the shooter as soon as he started shooting, they could have taken him out beforehand. Or law enforcement could have climbed up on that roof as well. Or law enforcement could have gotten to a point where they had a vantage point of him and and distracted him, done something. This shooting sounds like it could have been prevented. Now we've got a second eyewitness account that I want to... I want to know what you think in the in the comments. Um, I mean, obviously there is information flying fast and furious. Some of it's crap. Some of it's good. We'd love to hear what you think in the comments. If you've heard anything else, please let me know. Leave a comment. Um, also, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. Uh, please like this video so we can get this video out to as many people that can see it. Because if this was an inside job, this needs to be trumpeted to every mountaintop. Now, let's check out the second eyewitness we as trump started we i noticed two officers that were looking for something or somebody i was so i was looking around myself and seeing a guy on top of one of the buildings go in between one building to the next and went and told the officer that he was up there and when i went back to my spot i heard that people could still see the the person from where they were standing so i checked that out and i went and went back to tell the officer that if he came over there he could see them and when i turned my back is when the shots when the shots started and then it was it took me a second or two to figure out exactly what it was and then it was just getting out of there and helping helping some some other person out with her child and we got out and that was that was the end of that and I went and left and that was all. So the viewers have some perspective behind us, okay, is the American Glass Research Company, okay? Can you kind of describe the building behind us, the tan building right there? Can you take a look at it? And then where was the shooter exactly? Um, there's more buildings behind the tan building that we can see and we were back there and there's two buildings two or three buildings behind that and he was on both of them i assume both of them when he went on that small section from one to the other and that was that was where he where i last saw him was the end of his day. So this man was able to basically climb to the next building and you told law enforcement, hey, there's a guy over there. Correct. I don't know how he got up there. I don't know any of that, but I definitely saw him up there and the officer and that was that was all I know. We holy moly. Holy moly. This guy told law enforcement twice. He went and got two separate law enforcement uh, people and told them there's a guy climbing on the roof who had to go from one building to the next with a rifle. Now, when we talked to, when you heard the first uh, eyewitness talk about that he could see the secret service looking at him from the barn, this is what we're talking about. This is the counter sniper team. This is right behind the podium where Trump was speaking. These are the guys that evidently that, that shot the, uh, the would-be assassin after he started shooting. This is just nuts. Absolutely crazy. We can see here, this is where the shooter was. Let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger for you. This is where the shooter was. Here's the counter sniper teams that we were just showing you. Here's the Trump stage. So you've got a minimum, well, the one was in a group. So you have a group of eyewitnesses and then you have a whole second eyewitness telling law enforcement, telling Secret Service, you've got a guy climbing on a roof with a rifle. And that roof is no more than 450 feet from Trump. How is it that there are not Secret Service stationed on this roof? I mean, give me a break. How is it that when somebody signals a, of a credible threat and you've got a two to three minute window that these counter sniper teams don't take him out previous, prior if they can see the rifle? Or how is it that law enforcement 
who's standing there because these people have gone and gotten law enforcement. How is it that those law enforcement do not take action? They don't climb up on the roof. They don't shoot them with a pistol from on the ground. They don't throw rocks at What is going on? This, unfortunately, smacks, smacks of an inside job. I don't know that it is an inside job, but it is very, very suspicious. That's what I got to say for this. It seems too simple. It'd be one thing if it was a highly trained shooter from a thousand yards and he was well outside the, uh, the perimeter and, you know, okay, maybe you could have a security lapse. I don't know. But this just seems too easy, too contrived, especially when you've got two groups of eyewitnesses that saw that. How did they see the shooter before Secret Service saw the shooter? How is it they saw the shooter, alerted law enforcement, nobody gets on the radio, nobody, no law enforcement guy runs over there and says, oh my gosh, I see a guy on the roof with a, with a rifle, let me pull my pistol out. Nobody calls, nobody gets on the radio and says, hey, Secret Service, you got a threat? What is going on? Now, in light of this, we now know that there have been issues with Kim Cheadle, the director of the Secret Service. First of all, she's one of these diversity hire morons who has made it her point to get 30%, 30% women into the Secret Service. Not the, most, not the most highly qualified people. No, we have to have women. Furthermore, she was warned multiple times. The Trump campaign, we now have reports, has asked multiple times for a larger Secret Service detail. As a, as a former president and now one who is running for president, they asked for a full presidential detail, size-wise. And it was denied over and over again. And now we find out that there's been a, a petition circulating even within the Secret Service asking for Kim Cheadle's resignation. Why? Because it raised concerns about inadequate training, a double standard in disciplinary actions, and most alarmingly, vulnerabilities to potential insider threats that could jeopardize national security. Kim Cheadle, the director of the Secret Service, needs to resign today, needs to be investigated by Congress, and if, 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 worthwhile, brought up on charges. She is directly responsible with her incompetence, her policies, for the near assassination of a president. And every single person on that Secret Service detail needs to be subpoenaed and questioned and investigated. What did they know? What didn't they know? What the heck happened here? Why did they not take action when they had at least, based on eyewitness accounts, a two to three minute window where a credible threat with a rifle, was identified. It was in plain sight to people on the ground, to civilians on the ground, and yet law enforcement and the Secret Service did nothing. That needs to be investigated. Those people need to be thoroughly questioned, interrogated, investigated, and we got to find, we got to get to the bottom of what happened here. There are two major problems. There are two major issues that have, that I think have led to something like this. One is the constant drumbeat in the media about how evil Trump is. They constantly use inflammatory language. Trump is Hitler. Trump's going to destroy democracy. January 6th, blah, 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 blah. It goes over. We have, a, we have a montage of that. Shout out to Black Conservative Perspective that we're going to play. They very well could have energized this Antifa knucklehead to take the action that he took. But on the other side, was their complicity in the Secret Service and law enforcement. Did they know about this threat? Did they, did they willing, were they told from the top to slow play it, to stand down? What happened on the Secret Service side? Because there is a massive failure. A two to three minute window when they do not act with a credible threat. I have, I do not have, this is pure conjecture on my part, but that sounds to me like an inside job. That sounds to me like they were told if you get a situation like this, stand down because maybe we can get rid of Trump. And the fact that that roof that was only 450 feet away was not covered by Secret Service, that they didn't have somebody standing on that roof, just a regular old plain as day agent, only a sniper team there, just a regular old dude agent standing there going, nobody going to get on this roof. I mean, the security lapses are abominable. And that's why I say it, it just doesn't ring true. It stinks to high heaven. You've got multiple eyewitnesses. Nobody does anything. But on the other side, you've got this constant drumbeat of knuckleheads in the media that are energizing these people. Remember when Steve Scalise was, was shot way back when, years ago? 
And it was because the media had talked about how evil the Republicans were, that they were going to uh, put Bernie Sanders into all this stuff about Bernie Sanders. And they got, and a Bernie Sanders supporter heard all this and went and 